Charles. Many dignitaries, including, by the way, National Member of Parliament. Parliament. I just had the uh, pleasure of meeting. And esteemed colleagues. Today's launching of the Global Office of Astronomy for Development, the OAD, you will hear those letters often this morning, is historic not only for South African astronomy <coughs> and the SAAO, but also for our international astronomical community. <coughs> the IEU has been in existence for almost 100 years, and for the first half century of its existence, its focus was <coughs> primarily on the advancement of professional astronomy. The majority of our effort and resources were devoted to the meeting and published proceedings that were oriented toward professional astronomical research. As a professional society, the IAU first attended to the welfare of our members. As the IAU matured and astronomy thrived through the advent of the space age, there was increasing public interest in space and astronomy. The IAU responded by initiating education and outreach programs and becoming <coughs> more engaged with the public. Astronomy is unique, as you may know, in having a huge following of amateurs who are educated and enthusiastic and knowledgeable about astronomy. <coughs> They're a great resource for astronomy outreach. As so often happens in the history of organizations, a single event changed, caused a fundamental change in the outlook and the focus of the IAU. The International Year of Astronomy in 2009. We celebrated the 400th anniversary of Galileo's use of the telescope in 1609 to study the heavens. The IEU conceived of the idea to celebrate Galileo's anniversary by conducting the International Year of Astronomy, in partnership with UNESCO and the United Nations, to draw attention to astronomy in the place of humanity and the cause. The IYA 2009 initiative represented a change in the focus of the IAU. We had previously concerned ourselves largely with the world's 10,000 professional astronomers, and with the IYA, we expanded our domain to basically the entire Earth, 7 billion Earth leaders. Led by my predecessor as president of the IAU, Catherine Sosarski, the IAU helped develop and then coordinated an extensive organizational network that allowed us to work with individuals and groups in 145 countries. The IIYA the was a spectacular success, directly touching almost one billion people, that's uh, one seventh of the population of Earth, at a total cost of only 12 million euros. Tremendous value for the money. The Office of Astronomy for Development that we are inaugurating today is to a certain extent an outgrowth of that effort uh, for the IYA. Even before the IAU commitment to the IYA, some of us on the executive committee were advocating that the IAU should formulate a strategic plan work with nations who are interested in using astronomy as a vehicle for science education and technology development. This planning effort, which was led by Vice President George Miley, who is with us here this morning, took place over a two-year period and resulted in a strategic plan that envisioned various programs being undertaken and led by IAU members worldwide. Involved <coughs> training, visiting lectures, development of university curricula, institute twinning, international short courses that would enhance the scientific infrastructure of countries. An important part of the IAU plan was that these programs would be coordinated and overseen by a global office. Over one year ago, we invited proposals from organizations interested in hosting this office serve as an international nexus of education, outreach, and development activity. The SAAO, with the support of the South African National Research Foundation, submitted a very strong proposal to host the OAD here in Cape Town. 
that included offering important resources of space and personnel, and certainly funds that were sufficiently attractive that the IAU awarded the OAD to the South African Astronomical Observatory for the first five-year period. The governing board appointed by both the IAU and the NRF will set policy for the OAD and do oversight. Board members participated in the search for the initial director of the OAD that has resulted in an outstanding and experienced professional, you have just heard, Kevin Governor, who has known to all of you from his work in past years here at the SAA. The IAU is really excited to be launching this new initiative in partnership with the SAAO, the NRF, the ESD. And on behalf of the IAU, I thank these three organizations for your commitment to this enterprise and the important role of science in global development. I can promise you that because of the importance of astronomy education, development and our IEU <coughs> commitment to the OAD and the programs that it will undertake is strong. So we look forward to working for the success of the OAD in association with the SAAO, NRF, and the Department of Science and Technology. And we thank all of you in attendance for your support that many of you will be giving to this enterprise. We are confident that the new Office of Astronomy for Adults <coughs> will be an excellent success. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob, for uh, a very, very kind words. Uh, I, I would now like to call upon the Director General of the Department of Science and Technology, Dr. Phil Ndwaha, himself an experienced laser physicist who led activities at the CSIR uh, and uh, for the last five years has been the Director General of DST. Director of the Global Office for, of Astronomy for Development, Kevin Gardner. There are many, many, many other guests and scientists around that I've seen. So if we don't mention you by name, it's not because you're not important, but I do also like to acknowledge the presence of the member of uh, the Portfolio Committee of Science and Technology, Marie Shin, and of course, some senior executives uh, from the Department of Science and Technology. My responsibility this morning is really uh, important light because I have to introduce uh, Minister Naledi Pando, who is the second South Africa's Minister of Science and Technology. We forget that this is a young uh, ministry. Uh, before, of course, we used to be part of uh, the portfolio uh, of arts, culture, science, and technology. Higher education qualifications include a BA from the University of Botswana in Swaziland, <laughs> and an MA in Education from the University of Ghana. She completed an MA in Linguistics at the University of Stellenbosch in 1997, most importantly, whilst she was serving as a member of parliament. She was the first woman and the last chancellor of Cape Town. Became a member of parliament in 1994 and has an impressive experience of positions of public office, including deputy chief, chief whip of the ruling party of the National African Congress in the National Assembly from 1995 to 1998, the deputy chairperson of the National Council of Provinces in 1998 and its chairperson from 1999 to 2004. Her experience in education policy planning led to an appointment uh, as a South Africa's Minister of Education in 2004. And may I say, Minister, last Minister of Education, 
not because that portfolio doesn't exist anymore, because that portfolio has since been split. So Mrs. Naledi Pando is a member, of course, of the ANC National Executive Committee and was appointed the Minister of Science and Technology in May 2009 after the elections. So may I please humbly request the Minister of Science and Technology to come and speak to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, DG. And uh, thank you, Professor Charles, for being our program director this morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. I was most impressed uh, with the Professor Williams' ability to remember all those acronyms. <laughs> it reminded me of a, a preparatory meeting we had two weeks ago where we were discussing COP17 on UNFCCC. <laughs> and, uh, the subsequent POP conference, which will follow the COP17. <laughs> so I was most impressed, and I wish I could, uh, could grasp uh, all these uh, acronyms as, as well. I uh, have been intrigued that in my time in office as Minister of Science and Technology, I've become an AAA, an African Ambassador for Astronomy. And uh, it is, it's, a very, uh, it's a very peculiar position to occupy. One of the things that uh, I do do, uh, uh, given this office, is I've attempted to ensure that uh, our cabinet is fully behind uh, the work that science and technology attempts to do in all fields of endeavor. So I bore my cabinet colleagues consistently with what are called cabinet memoranda on subjects that I believe are of importance for cabinet to be acquainted with. And uh, just a few weeks ago, after one of these tedious memoranda of mine, one of my colleagues asked me, why do you like astronomy so much? What is talking about it? SKA Salt, SAO Professor Phil Charles. What do you call this? So uh, I uh, had to, to sit down uh, and explain to the colleague that, uh, have you ever met a medical scientist? And she said, yes. So uh, when you meet them, how do they behave? Well, they sit and explain the problem about the financing of clinical health. Uh, they might complain about tertiary hospitals and so on. Uh, so I said, well, if you meet an astronomer, they take you to go and view the skies. <laughs> they make you put your eye against a telescope. <laughs> they introduce you to radio astronomy. Uh, so it's not a mere sitting and explanation of problems. They actually want you to participate. And this is why I'm so much an astronomy ambassador. So the colleague was most intrigued, but I continue with my memoranda. Eventually, <laughs> <laughs> eventually I'll, I'll get them all to settle. <laughs> I've promised myself that. But uh, going on with our uh, uh, work as ambassador, we have been interacting with uh, several countries on the continent on matters of astronomy. And I'm very pleased to be able to announce at this meeting uh, that following a very successful meeting with the Minister of Science in Mozambique, we have agreed that we are going to be laying together uh, with President Nabuza of Mozambique the foundation stone for the establishment of the Mozambique Radio Astronomy Observatory. <laughs> together. Our scientists will uh, uh, be going through to look at uh, its entire suitability and advise us as to what we need to do. Uh, I'm afraid that, DG, <laughs> I have committed some of your funding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, to assist uh, and uh, to motivate the Minister of Science in Mozambique to act on the promise uh, that we identified. So uh, we have agreed that we'll make a small contribution available. I think it's modest that we should do it. Uh, but we felt we should.